So in this video, I want to take a look at the concept of the gear ratio. Now, I mean, since this is in the context of electrical engineering, um, we may not be, I mean, well, electrical engineering students may not be so familiar with the gear ratio unless you've had a course or an introduction to this concept. It's a relatively simple concept, uh, but I think it's worth spending some time on nonetheless, since all of these, um, as we, well, all of the practical um, systems that we'll look at with DC machines, induction machines, and so on when it comes to electric vehicle modeling, will use some type of gearbox in the calculation. So the purpose of a gear box, or the, the gear in general, is essentially it's a torque multiplier or it's a speed reducer, I guess you can say. So you can increase, you can adjust the torque, I should say, um, from a source, I guess, to an output. So an input to an output. So you give some torque to the input of the gearbox and some speed to the input of the gearbox. And the thing on the outside of the gearbox will be, uh, will be the torque and the, the speed on the outside will be different. It's kind of like a, I guess you can kind of say it's similar to the idea of a transformer uh, in electrical engineering um, uh, terms, I guess. Um, but I, I usually like to, to, to not make such comparisons because I like to give things credit where it's due. And But I mean, I guess it, it's analogous in that it converts um, it, it, it converts the energy, I guess, uh, or, or the different levels. Like, I mean, the energy has to be conserved, obviously, but it, 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 it multiplies certain aspects of the of the energy that's input uh, relative to what's output based on some fixed ratio which is predetermined based on the construction of the gears themselves so the assumptions here are that the gearbox is uh, let's say it's a hundred percent efficient so this is a hundred percent efficiency so there's no losses we also assume that the gears are perfectly rigid otherwise we get into a whole mess of other calculations. And the other assumption that we make is that there is no space between the teeth, uh, between teeth of the gear. So as you know, gears have teeth and that's how they kind of uh, push on one another um, or connect to one another, I should say. And we're assuming here that this, that these gears have no space between the teeth. So we know that uh, tangential velocity and angular velocity can be related with the equation V equals R omega, where R is the radius of the disk, and this is for a generic disk, and omega is the angular velocity. Now we also know that at this point of contact, so this point of contact, let's, let's say that there's a point of contact here where these two gears are turning. So this gear is turning this way, and this gear is turning this way, right? But at the point of contact, this one is going up and this one is going down. Um, sorry, they're both going up. So I work they're not going in the opposite direction. They're both going. Uh, now I've gone erased that. So uh, they're both going in the same direction. Sorry, they're not going because this one would be going up like this, and this one would be going up like that, and that would make no sense if they went in the opposite direction. My apologies. They're both going in the same direction. And the speed at that point, the tangential velocity at that point, is equal. So what that means is you can write this, uh, but I guess you can say V in is equal to V out. And that means R in times omega in is equal to R out times omega out. Now you can rearrange this and you can get it in terms of a ratio. So you have W in over W out is equal to R out over R in. And this is what they define, uh, well, the triangle should be on top of the equal sign, but this is what they define as being the gear ratio. It's, it's the ratio of how the speed uh, or the radii, I guess, of these two disks um, are, uh, it's the ratio of the two relative to one another, I should say. It, it's really just that simple. So then we can take it one step further into a more uh, useful or, I guess, complete picture. Uh, and we can say that if the gear is 100% efficient, then we can say that the output power, the output power is equal to the input power because there's no loss, obviously. And we know that the output power is equal to the output torque times the output angular velocity. And we know that the input power is equal to the input torque, input torque times the input angular velocity. And so you can rearrange this 
and you can get that the gear ratio is then also equal to the output torque divided by the input torque which is equal to the input angular velocity divided by the output angular velocity and so this is the expression that is the most useful uh, for the context of what we're doing uh, for modeling these electric vehicles because we can we don't really care for the, the the actual radius of the gear we care more about the torque input and the torque output as well as the angular velocities and how they vary <coughs> so suppose we have a DC motor here and the DC motor is being fed by some let's say some battery and the output of this DC motor uh, let's say this is a DC motor and of course this is a battery with some voltage and we say that this the output of this motor is connected to some gearbox right so this is your gear box and the gearbox usually has some ratio so uh, let's just say it's 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 given a ratio of T out to T in however you want to take it um, and then the output of this gearbox is connected to let's say it's connected through through some means it's connected to some type of wheel okay so this is not a very nicely drawn wheel but we're imagining this is the output and that this is the part of the vehicle that actually touches the ground and actually moves so when you have here let's say uh, let's say you have here a torque uh, or an angular velocity let's call this omega out and you have here this mechanical omega m and you have here tm and you have on this side t out then what this means is that whenever we do these calculations when we do the calculation from the dc motor side and we find the developed torque and if i mean if in the in the event that the that the motor is lossless then the developed torque is the same as tm and in the event that it is not lossless and there are some losses then we have to subtract the developed torque or sorry the losses I should say from the developed torque to find out what this shaft torque is and so this is the thing we should keep in mind is that when we're when we have a condition at the roadside for example if we say that the vehicle is traveling uh, let's say the vehicle is traveling like 10 meters per second that's the condition on this side right so that's the condition on the wheel on the roadside so then you have to convert this 10 uh, to some uh, torque using the radius of the wheel and then you'll have the output torque here we usually call that the tractive torque in the context of what we're doing here uh, and so you have this tractive torque here or sometimes it's called the shaft torque I guess and in order to convert from this tractive torque to the to the motor side torque you have to use this gearbox and in order to, to to understand what this or how this conversion works whether to multiply or divide you use this expression that we have here at the top uh, this one here right so we start uh, so if it's 10 meters per second here that'll give you some torque here T out let's say and then you'll convert using the gear ratio and then you'll get TM here and then you can determine whatever let's say you want to find out how much current the motor is drawing or whatever it's doing you can determine that based off of uh, these conditions so th the point of this is to show you that you can use or you should use the gearbox uh, to, to translate the different conditions so there's there's whatever happens on the motor side and there's whatever happens on the road side and then the translation between the two is the gearbox itself so if you see examples that we do in this in these in these series of videos uh, where the gear ratio is multiplied and we, we 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 increase and decrease the torques this i mean refer back to this idea here uh, in order to in order to fully understand what it is that we're doing so i hope this was helpful like and subscribe to support the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one.